Signifor automates alert flows and ensures your team stays connected to critical events anytime, anywhere. By integrating seamlessly with systems like IT monitoring, service desk, manufacturer control, and facility management, it transforms important events into instant, actionable alerts. Flexible APIs and direct integrations make connecting your business systems simple. After filtering and prioritizing what's critical, Signal4 sends alerts via push notifications, email, SMS, and voice calls. Built-in tracking and automated escalations ensure no alert goes unnoticed, while duty schedules and skill-based routing deliver messages to the right people at the right time in the right way. The mobile app for iOS and Android allows your team to manage alerts, communicate effectively, and respond quickly and reliably all in one app from anywhere in the world. Signifor helps your team respond faster, stay organized, and minimize downtime when it matters most. Hello, and welcome to our Signal 4 video series. Today we're going to go over a short features demo showcasing some of the key functionality of the Signal 4 web portal and mobile app and showcasing how it can help you and your business. So the first thing we want to see is right off the bat, we have our Signal 4 web portal on the left and our Signal 4 mobile app here on the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and send in an alert and we can see how this interacts with both the web portal and the mobile app and how you receive the data. And we can see right off the bat that the alert has come into, it, this, come into the system. We received the push notification drop down there because we're inside of the app. And we'll also notice that right off the bat, we see that there's a new alert inside the mobile app, as well as the web portal, which showcases this orange, meaning we have a new unhandled alert in both systems. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on the orange section in the support team because that's the team that received the alert. And we'll see here that I have a new alert opened. So if I click on this to expand it, we'll also notice that we have the ability to acknowledge and close. And I actually have the same abilities over here in the mobile app. If I click on the one, we'll see the alert again. And if I can click on it to expand it, we'll actually see all of the information for this alert. And right off the bat, we'll see here that we have an AI summary in both the web portal and the mobile app. So if I go ahead and expand this out on the mobile app, it'll automatically generate the summary of this alert. And what we'll see here is that it reads through the entire alert. It gives me a quick AI summary of the information in the alert. So we'll see that the user, KCP, cannot log into Outlook. And we see that same information over here in the web portal as well, letting us know that the AI summary is activated on both sides. So now what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and acknowledge the alert. And as soon as I do, you'll actually see the acknowledgement happen inside of both the mobile app and the web portal. And if I scroll down, We'll actually see here we have the responses. So we can actually see that it was acknowledged after one minute inside the web portal. And we can also see that here in the mobile app as well at the very top. So we can see it was open for just under two minutes. Next thing what we have here is we actually have our escalation path. So we can actually see this alert came into the support system. And because I didn't acknowledge it in time, it was escalated up to the IT ops team. And if I give another little refresh here, we'll actually see that it was escalated again from the IT ops team to the security ops teams, letting us know exactly what happens to the alert with the escalation path if your users don't acknowledge it or close it in time. One of the other items we're gonna notice here is we'll see how this alert has a green title with a house as the icon. And if I go ahead and send in a second alert here, we're actually going to see that this one has different options set to it, including a different ringtone set as its priority. So we see the new alert came in and we also heard the alarm that went off for this alert, letting us know that there was a critical problem because I overrode this category. So now if I go ahead and check out this category for that alert uh, on my phone here, I'm going to go to my support team. And then this went into the priority one, which we know by the color and the icon. And if I scroll down a little bit, we'll actually see that I have override my push settings, 
which means even if my phone is set to ring a certain way, I can actually override the ringtone for this category, which is what we heard. And then the option also here for critical alerts, turning this on allows this category to override the silent mode on my phone as well as overriding the selected ringtone. And this option is available on both Android and iPhones through different settings. So the next thing we want to do is we want to show who's on duty and what team. So as we can see in the mobile app, if I scroll all the way to the top of the home page, we'll see my status is on duty and then my duty ends at 5 p.m. for my support team. The other two options, I am on duty for both IT ops and the sec ops team, but I'm on duty manually so I don't have an end date or time for that duty shift. And if I scroll over to the right on this tab, we'll actually see my next upcoming scheduled duties so we'll see for the support team, I'm scheduled from nine to five tomorrow, and then again, nine to five on Friday for this team. But now in the web portal, I wanna see the same information. So we have this option here for who's on duty. And when I click on this, we'll see all of the teams that I, can ha that I have access to, which in my case is all of my teams. And we'll see who's on duty for each team. And what we notice right off the bat is that the Robert user on the support team displays a little bit differently than the other team members. And this is because the Robert user is scheduled on duty, so he actually has an on duty end date and time, whereas the other users are just on duty manually, so they don't have an end time because they went on duty manually, they're gonna have to go off duty manually. Now, what else we need to know is, what if the Robert user can't quite work my shift tomorrow. Let's say I have a doctor's appointment and I need somebody to cover. So I have a couple different options to do that. I can come here under my team and go to the shift and duties option and go to my duties. And we'll see here that I have the nine to five on Wednesday, but I want to move over here to Thursday and I have my nine to five shift here. Um, I can click on this shift and set a stand in for the entire shift or just a portion of the shift for just a couple hours here or there if I need it. But what I also can do here is in the mobile app, if I scroll down to my teams right here, so here's my IT ops teams, here's my security ops, and here's my support team. What else I can do is I can actually click on the user and we'll actually take us to the list of all of our teams with the option to contact that user via their supported channels. So currently the Bruce user only has an email as a supported channel, but if I click on the Peter user, he actually has the option to be emailed, phone called, or send an SMS to that user. And now after I've confirmed with this user to cover my shift, I can then click on the set stand-in option here. And this will again allow me to set a stand-in for that shift. So in our case here, we know that Bruce works next week, but I know he can't work on Monday, so we need somebody to cover a shift. And I'm gonna go ahead and work that extra day for him just so he can go and take care of his doctor's appointment or whatever he needs to take care of. So inside the mobile app, if I click on the set stand-in button for Bruce, we'll see that Bruce is unavailable, who's the stand-in, Robert, and what day and time am I taking over his shift? And once that's done, I click on the set stand-in. And now we'll see if I scroll back up that I have an alert message let me know that I am going to be taking over Bruce's shifts on Monday from nine to five for eight hours. So now here in the web portal, if I scroll to the next week and I scroll over to my Monday, we can see here that Bruce had the original shift, but I'm his stand-in, which is obvious by the icons here, on the Monday shift, taking it over for him. If we scroll back over, you'll see that I'm only taking the Monday. He still has his Tuesday, his Wednesday, his Thursday, and his Friday. And the best part about Signal 4 is Signal 4 can work with all different types of systems here. And we can showcase that here quickly in our gallery. We have all of these different integration types which can easily connect inside of Signal 4 to receive events to create alerts using Signal 4 event intelligence, programmably making sure that your right alerts go to the right people at the right time, no matter where they're located at. So I'm gonna go back to my alerts here. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send in one more alert here. And this time I'm gonna send it in from one of our third party systems so we could see how well the AI summary works with a little bit more information than just what I sent in with those first two. 
So this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my signals so we can see all of our signals. And here we have the new signal I just sent in. And if I expand this out, we'll have our AI summary. And this time I'm going to generate it here in the web portal just so we can see how that works here. So I'm going to click on the click here option. And what this is going to do is, again, it's going to read through all of the information that was sent to us, which, as you can see, coming from one of the third party systems, can be a lot of information. So I'm going to go back to my top because I don't want to read through all of that. And the AI summary lets me know quickly at a glance what's going on in this ticket. So we'll see that it's Outlook services down. It's a priority three incident. And it was reported to us from ConnectWise. And it's currently marked new. But that gives us a quick summary of what's happening in this alert. OK, now that we've gone ahead and acknowledged one, I'm going to go ahead and close this alert just so we can see that happen as well. And we'll see in the mobile app and the web portal that the alert becomes grayed out. And I have now have a closure on it. And if I click on it in the mobile app, we'll again see that the alert title is grayed out. And if I scroll down, we now have an acknowledgement and a closure on this alert. Thank you and have a nice day. Goodbye.